Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. What's going on, man? You wanted to talk to me about one of your friends or something? Yeah, I was I was playing ball with a guy, mm -hmm. um, and afterwards, it, it, you know, we did the whole Eid Mubarak and so on. Mm -hmm. But he felt like he couldn't even celebrate Eid because wow. he felt like he had done some things in his past, and that that had kind of taken him too far, and everyone around him was making him feel bad, like there was no hope. I tried to talk to him, but at some point, I I kind of ran out. And I meet a lot of these people, subhanAllah, like we are far more uh, merciless towards people mm -hmm. and it's ironic, we expect all this mercy from Allah for ourselves and we're, we don't give any of it to people, right? So if people mess up, fine. And people, some, some people do haram things, some people do like epic, super, extra haram squared things. Yeah. And other people find out about it and they will say things like, oh, you're never going to be forgiven. Allah's never going to forgive you, dude. You forget it. You're so going to hell, kind of thing. And you hear that enough times, you get guilt tripped enough times, you start believing it. But the problem is, if you start believing that you're not going to be forgiven, then you really have no motivation left to do anything good in your life. Yeah. Like, why would you? I mean, why would I even pray? I'm going to go to hell anyway. Yeah, why would I, you know, care about my parents? Why would I speak the truth? Why would I not stay away from more haram? Yeah. It's not gonna doesn't matter anymore anyway. I'm just already done. Add to the pie. Yeah, just add it on. You know, how much worse can it already can, can it get? Kind of thing, you know. And so when I try to talk to people about this this state, which is not something easy to pull out of, so you could give a reminder because you know the Prophet says for the kid, remind reminder will have its own benefit. It'll it'll give some benefit. But this is something that has to be done like reinforced. That's why that kid is mentioned. You can't just tell someone a good thing once. You gotta like. Stay with people like that, you know. Like a lot of people say, I watch your, I watch that same video like ten times. I was like, Yeah, I hope that helped because some things you need to hear over and over again. You can't just hear it once, right? So when when if one time I was telling somebody to have hope, and I said, You know, let me tell you about Musa Ali Salam, and she stopped me. She goes, No, no, but those are prophets. They're such awesome people. Why? You know, I, I messed up. I, I, I made so many mistakes. So give me something I can relate to. I was like, hold on a second. I want to tell you about Musa before he was a prophet. Not after. And before he was a prophet, he kind of, sort of, Ali Salaam did a little bit mess up. He's like, what? Prophet? Messed up? I was like, yeah, he got upset and he punched a guy and he kind of died. So, and then he was wanted for murder in Egypt. And there was an order to kill him on sight and he had to kind of run away and he was a fugitive from the law I mean I'm sure you've done something bad yeah but murder that's pretty big is that is that relevant maybe if we can see how we he can find hope mm. maybe we can use that to find hope ourselves you know yeah. so now it's important to know he wasn't a prophet yet because if he's a prophet then he talks to Allah and Allah talks to him yes yeah. but if he's not a prophet he talks to Allah, but Allah does not yet talk to him. Just like us. Like we talk to Allah all the time. We, may, we pray all the time. But Allah does not talk back to us. So we ask forgiveness, mm -hmm. but we don't get a message from Allah saying, you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. So we don't know where it stands. So now what's awesome about his story is that as soon as he punched a guy and he died and he said, this is from the work of shaitan, he turned to Allah and said, Master, I have wronged myself. He admitted that he did something wrong. Forgive me. Faghfirli, forgive me. Okay. Does Allah talk to him? No. Because he's not a prophet yet. But the ayah of the Quran says, Faghfara lahu, therefore he forgave him. The ayah says, therefore he forgave So, forgive me, therefore he forgave him. And the fa in Arabic is for therefore, sababiyya, and it's also for immediacy. So, therefore he forgave him immediately. So, and then he says, and then you would read that and go, wait, just like that? I mean, he killed someone. Mm -hmm. And he didn't like grovel and beg for an apology for years and years and years. And, oh Allah, am I forgiven or not? What's going to happen? He asked Allah immediately, sincerely, I have made a huge mistake, forgive me. And how long before the forgiveness arrives? Yeah. It's done. And if you're doubting it, 
The ayah ends, Innahu huwa al ghafoor al rahim. There's no doubt about it. He is the extremely forgiving, always loving and merciful. Wow. You can get murder forgiven. If it was a sincere mistake and you sincerely turn to Allah, that's what happens with Musa alayhi I'm not suggesting somebody go do murder. But what I am saying is, probably your mistake isn't that big. Mm. It's not that big. You know, killing someone is probably one of the highest sins against humanity. Why? Because Allah says, if you killed one person, It is as though you've killed humanity altogether. Why? Why is that? I mean, think about the logic behind it, right? If you kill one person, that's so one person, there's billions of people. So how is it the same as killing all of humanity? Imagine someone killed Adam. Mm. What happens? <laughs> there is no humanity left. There's no humanity left. You know? This person has entire and entire future generations of people under him. And all human beings are direct descendants of Adam alayhi salam. So they have the same status as Adam alayhi salam. Mm. So murder is not a small deal. And yet Allah will leave the door open even for that level of a crime. Imagine. Um. So there might be somebody like, one day there's somebody who becomes Muslim who did commit murder. Yeah. Who was in jail or something for committing murder. Yeah. And he's thinking Allah will never forgive me. Well, he should read Musa alayhi salam's story. Um. You can be as great. I mean, the, the, he's after being that. And you know what? Everybody in Egypt thinks of him as what? A killer, a criminal, a fugitive. And Allah raises him to the level of a prophet. Wow. And one of the mo and the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. Oh, think about that. Like <laughs> you know, to think that you've made a mistake and it's over for you. Yes, maybe in the eyes of people, because people are cheap with their forgiveness. Allah yeah. isn't. Allah gives. He's just waiting for you to ask genuinely. You know? So if people just sincerely ask Allah to forgive and turn around, and by the way, he didn't just ask for forgiveness. He says, and, and here's the really cool part. So okay, fine, Allah forgave immediately. Yeah. But I, I kept saying, Allah doesn't talk to him. Mm -hmm. So does he know that Allah forgave him? No. no. Yeah. But in the very next ayah, he says, Rabbi bima an'amta alayya. Master, because of the favor you've done to me, I'll never back up criminals again. Wait, what favor did Allah do to him? He just killed somebody, asked for forgiveness, because he got conned by the other guy. He backed up the criminal. Yeah. So he punched the wrong guy. And now he says, because the favor you did to me, I'll never back up a criminal again. So what's the favor? The favor is forgiveness. But then the question is, how does he know about forgiveness? Yeah. Allah doesn't talk to him. You know what we're learning here? If you're a sincere believer in Allah, you don't need revelation from Allah, like an angel coming and telling you you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. When you sincerely ask for forgiveness, you should actually have no doubt whatsoever that forgiveness came, it is a matter of fact. Mm. It's not a matter of assumption. Not, not to a believer. And since he's a believer, he doesn't have to be a prophet to know that. Uh. He just knows it. SubhanAllah. Uh. So you don't have to like, I wonder if Allah forgave me, I don't know if it... Did you, the only thing you should wonder is, was my, was my apology and was my seeking of forgiveness sincere? Mm -hmm. Was it genuine? Was it heartfelt? If it was, then you have your answer. Yeah. And then you still have to deal with the people around. You have to deal with yeah. You have to deal with the consequences and all of that, and that's easy, because once you have Allah's forgiveness, then Allah makes dealing with the consequences easy, because now Allah's on your side. When you haven't sought Allah's forgiveness, then you don't have Allah on your side, because you abandoned Him. Yeah. Apologize to Him first, and then yes, you will have to deal with the wrong you've done to other people, but He'll help you deal with it. He'll make He'll help you make right out of the wrong, you know, as best you possibly can. So. People like that should have hope, inshallah. And you know, be encouraging and kind of slip things here and there and kind of uh, don't give up on people like that and don't let them kind of fade away. Because they usually, when they get depressed like that, they stop showing up to play ball or yeah. whatever. And then they, you don't see them anymore and you're like, I wonder what happened. Yeah. And then you hear even more messed up news about them, you know? So kind of just stay in touch, maybe drop a text message, kind of. Yeah, reach out to him. You know, reach out to him just every once in a while. You don't have to give him this lecture, <laughs> just kind of like. Just throw in a, a few good words of encouragement here and there, inshallah. Okay. It'll help. It'll help, inshallah. Thank you very much. You got it, inshallah. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.